Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship. Welcome to virtual worship at Evergreen Lutheran Church. Special warm welcome to those of you who are not typically uh, worshipers with us on a Sunday morning here at church. We uh, think that your presence blesses us, and we pray that this worship blesses you too. Um, today is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost, and uh, you will um, you will hear sermon and lessons based on the lectionary, which is the ninth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, this week, we have a couple of things going on. On Tuesday afternoon at 1 o'clock, we start a new, um, a new study, and uh, you are welcome to join us. The link will be in um, the Tuesday Newsday, as well as a link in Tuesday Newsday for Faith and Culture at 4 o'clock on Thursdays. And if you would like to come by for communion on Wednesday afternoons, I'm here from 2.30 to 4. I pray God's deep and profound blessing on your worship today, wherever you are. Let's take a minute to quiet our hearts. The invocation. We gather this morning in the name of the Father who loves us always and who calls us his children. In the name of the Son who breaks down the barriers of hostility and unites us in a single body. In the name of the Holy Spirit who inspires us toward true peace and joy. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Glorious God, your generosity waters the world with goodness and you cover creation with abundance. Awaken in us a hunger for the food that satisfies both body and spirit. And with this food, Fill all the starving world through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear, and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God.
And let all who toil, let them come to the water. And let all who are weary, let them come to the Lord. All who Oh, hey, hey, I, I don't have a lot of time to talk to you today. I know this is the children's message. It's for you. I know, but I'm so busy. I have so much going on. Not sure I can pay attention to you today. Hope you don't, hope you don't mind. And I hope you don't hold it against me. Well, I'm fibbing. I'm teasing you. Do you think Jesus would ever look around at people that he saw in his day in need and say, well, I don't have time for you today? Never. I don't think he ever would. In today's story, Jesus has just found out about his good friend and his cousin, John the Baptist, that he has been killed. And Jesus is heartbroken. And he just wants to get away to pray, maybe even cry. He's sad. He's heartbroken. He just wants to be alone. But the people won't let him be alone. They need him. They're hungry for his words and his love. They're even hungry for anything that he can give them. And so he doesn't turn his back on them or run by because he didn't have time for them. He meets with them. And he blesses them. There's 5,000 men and then there's women and children on top of it. There's a huge crowd of people. And Jesus blesses all of them. And then he does a miracle. He feeds them with a little bit of bread and a little bit of fish. And everybody's satisfied. You got to know about me that if you need me, I will never turn my back on you, and I always have time for you. Jesus does too. Jesus wants you to be in relationship with him, in friendship with him. He wants you to pray to him. He wants you to yell at him if you're not happy. He wants you to cry and rest in him. But most of all, he wants you to remember that whatever you need, and whatever love and support you need, you can find it in him. And you can find it in your mom and your dad and your friends and your family. And yes, you can find it in me. We all have time for you because we love you and we want to take care of you. Like Jesus did all those people that special day. I love you. I love you so much. I have all day for you. Come visit with me or call me. Let me know how you're doing. Okay? Have a great Sunday. Take care. Bye-bye. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus heard this, 
he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he, he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples. And the disciples gave them to the crowds and all ate and were filled. And they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, 12 baskets full. And those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Grace and peace be with you today, this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, I am coming to you today from one of my favorite places at Evergreen Lutheran, that is the Garden of Hope, our columbarium. And I am supported today in my message by the great cloud of witnesses that surround me. I'm not sure you've ever seen uh, the movie Babette's Gistebud, which is Babette's Feast. It's a Danish film. and. Uh, if you choose to see it, be prepared to read uh, the subtitles. <laughs> uh, it is not my favorite way to see a movie, but uh, I guarantee you it is a movie worth seeing and, yes, reading. It's a story full of grace. Grace and extravagance and sacrificial love, generosity and hospitality. Let me share with you as briefly as I can the storyline. Philippa and Martine are the daughters of their widowed father, known to us only as pastor. He is the founder of a penitent Lutheran sect uh, as stark as the rugged, bleak coastline of Jutland in Denmark, where they reside. The pastor is so religious, he named his daughters after the founder of the Lutheran church, Martin Luther, and his associate, Philip. Melanchthon. The pastor and his two daughters uh, care for the physical well-being and the spiritual well-being of this small church in Denmark. Forsaking their own personal lives, the daughters have become their father's right hands. The members of the sect, well, <laughs> they're grumpy and they're unforgiving and they are so resentful and grudge-holding. After 26 years, the pastor dies, and the daughters have become then the center of this spiritual sect. One evening during a fierce storm, the new, now elderly sisters hear a knock on their door. It is Babette, half dead from exposure. During a political uprising in Paris, Babette's husband and son were killed, and she fled for her life. She now begs for their help, for her survival. And she wants to be a servant for them. And when the sisters reply that they have no money, Babette says, just let me take care of you for room and board. Babette's an incredible chef. That was her job in Paris. And the sisters and the parishioners benefit from her skill at cooking. And a strange phenomenon develops. The food begins to taste better and better to everyone. And the sisters note that even though they have better food, there is more money left over with Babette taking charge of the kitchen. Perhaps that's an echo of the abundance of Christ feeding the 5,000, although there is no claim in this film to the miraculous. For 14 years, Babette, cooks for parishioners who meet regularly for prayer and a meal at the sister's home. But their meals are filled with grumbling and bickering as they are as filled as they are with hymns and prayer, maybe more so. They harbor resentments and grudges against each other for wrongs committed a long time ago. 
One day a letter comes from France and arrives for Babette. It's the first communication she's received since she fled Paris. The letter suggests she's won 10,000 francs in the French lottery. At first, the sisters are delighted at her plight, her good fortune. But then they grow sad, thinking that because Babette now has this money, she will probably leave them. However, Babette surprises them when she offers to prepare a gourmet French meal for the sect in honor of the pastor's 100th birthday. Don't forget to do that for me someday. Babette travels back to France in order to buy food. Soon she returns with a boat full of crates containing wine and champagne and vegetables and small quail and even a large turtle for turtle soup. The night of the feast finally arrives. Babette is working hard in the kitchen. She set the table with a glittering array of crystal glasses and goblets, fine china and gleaming, gleaming silver. The, the cottage is transformed into a setting just fit for a king. The guests arrive and when they do, they shake their fingers at one another and remind each other to keep their religion's vow to not enjoy the feast. As the various wines, the soup, and succeeding courses are brought in by the, by the boy serving, as, uh, serving uh, as waiter, the exquisite beauty and taste of the food, they begin to work their magic on the diners. We see, we see in the film this progressive softening of spirits. The reluctant start growing delighted as the meal progresses. One by one, the parishioners who held grudges against one another seek pardon or offer forgiveness. All are fed, everybody's fed, and there is more than enough for everyone. And somehow the grace of this foreigner, Babette, creates profound space for forgiveness and abundance and fullness. Theologian Frederick Dale Brunner points out that the feeding of the 5,000, the story that we read today that was just read by Barb and Fred Geist is the only one of Jesus's miracles that gets recorded in all four gospels. The only one, that's amazing. What is it about this miracle that makes it so important that the evangelist clearly concluded that you simply couldn't have a gospel without it. Brunner suggests that it may be because of the tie-in of this gospel lesson to the Lord's Supper, which is so important to us. Does anyone miss the rhythm of taking and thanking and breaking and giving? Jesus is revealed in this story as not only sufficient for spiritual needs, but also physical ones too. And also that somehow the feeding Jesus ultimately provides and that we see again and again in our own Lord's Supper is food, not just for the church, but for the whole world. Like the paltry amount of bread and fish the disciples initially discovered, so the food of the Lord's Supper looks paltry. Bread and a little bit of wine. And not up and looks like it's not up to the task of giving this hurting and broken world what it actually needs. But the story tells us of the giving to this hurting and broken world what it needs and it tells us that it is sufficient and that this is precisely what the world is longing for maybe that is why theologically and sacramentally and ecclesiastically the four evangelists knew that this story had to be included we've heard this story a plethora of times the feeding of the 5,000 is so familiar to, to us with a storyline similar to Babette's guest debut. In the kingdom of God, my friends, there will always be enough. 
and there will always be a place at the table for you and for me and for all people, grumpy, resentful, joyful, and in deep need. The bottom line, my brothers and sisters, is that God is always providing. God is always feeding. God is always giving. This is not a miraculous act at all. We can attest to that. We can explain this because we have been the recipients of God's gracious abundance. God is good. God provides. And God says, do not be anxious for tomorrow or for anything for that matter, because there will always be enough. It's good news today. Hold it close, take it in, and live it. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. You take resources that appear to be meager, you bless them, and by your miraculous power, there is enough. May your children trust that what you bless and ask us to share with the world is abundantly sufficient. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your bountiful creation offers sustenance and life for all creatures. Protect this abundance for the well-being of all. Reverse the damage we have caused your creation. Replenish groundwater supplies. Provide needed rains in places of drought. And protect forests from wildfires. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Hear the anguish of tender hearts who cry to you in suffering and satisfy their deepest needs. Bring wholeness and healing to those who suffer in body, heart, soul, and mind. We especially pray for those listed on our prayer list, those deeply affected by COVID-19 and others we now name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You have created a powerful people at Evergreen Lutheran. May we always be thankful for the abundant gifts you have blessed us with. Continue to shape us, even in these times of separation, into a community who cares deeply for those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear our prayer. prayer. You gather your saints as one. 
united in the body of Jesus. Bring us with all your saints to the heavenly banquet. We remember with love and thanksgiving the saints we have known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Once again, I will thank you for your loving generosity. Uh, your offering has kept this congregation in motion and uh, quite nicely afloat. So thank you for uh, remembering to give your gift. The offering prayer. Let us pray. Gracious God, as grains of wheat are gathered for bread and grapes together are poured out as wine, so may we be united in your presence through this sacrament of grace. Then filled with your power, send us into the world as leaven for those hungering and thirsting for you. Amen. Just a reminder to have your bread and wine available for blessing it uh, for you to take Holy Communion at home. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them, them to, to the, the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is, is right, right to, to give, give God, God thanks, thanks and praise. praise. I invite you to hold the bread. On the night that Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now the cup. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of your sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us this morning in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Hear his bread, hear his wine. Christ is with us, he is with us. Break the bread, taste the wine, Christ is with us here. Hear his grace, hear his peace, Christ is with us, he is with us. Know his grace. Find his peace, feast on Jesus here. The gifts of God for the beloved children of God. May you be nourished, strengthened for your life's journey. While you receive communion at home, we will be receiving communion here. <laughs>
may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen each one of us and keep us in God's grace. Let us pray. In this meal, O God, you have renewed our bodies and our souls. We thank you for this free gift of grace. Continue, Continue to strengthen, to strengthen us, us to be, be true, true to our calling to serve, to serve you. you. And, and to, to proclaim, proclaim the news of your redeeming love to all who are in need. We ask this through Jesus, the bread of life, whose love we promise to celebrate with our whole hearts. Amen. Amen. Receive God's blessing. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you deep, deep peace this day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, be merciful, remember, feed, and love the poor. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Be God. Blessings on your week. Stay healthy, stay strong. God be with you.